Hi all, so welcome to our next In Conversation with the This Can Happen Ambassadors. I will let uh, Emily and uh, Sylvia introduce themselves, but uh, my name's Dawn Kirk uh, and I will be hosting uh, the session and the conversation today. Hi, I'm Emily Hamilton. I'm uh, a This Can Happen Ambassador. I'm also a very proud transgender woman. Hello everyone, my name is Sylvia Bruce and I'm an integrative counsellor, NLP coach and various other things and a former uh, financial executive. Thank you. So great that we're having this conversation today and what we're going to be talking about um, in this one is all about the menopause and some of the myths and challenges that um, we may have faced around it and also um, you know it is or it has just been a, me a menopause awareness month and we've had uh, menopause awareness day um, so we just wanted to have a conversation today um, because I, I know for myself um, when I grew up in my household uh, you know my mum my grandma certainly instilled some very um, rigid uh, points and views around what would happen when you went through the menopause and I, I now know having come out of the other side that it's very different to what was shared uh, with me when I was uh, when I was younger and growing up so I just wanted to start before we get into sort of um, you know some of the specific conversation is you know just share some uh, information really and there are three stages um, of the menopause which I think not everybody knows uh, and is aware of so I think lots of people may have heard about perimenopause so that is the start of what happens when you um, are entering into it but you are still having um, your monthly cycles we then get into the actual menopause which can happen anywhere between 45 and, and 55 I think is the age range that people talk about but I do know from from sort of my own experience and talking to some other people that that can be very different for people it can happen earlier and it can also happen a lot later and then we've got the post menopause and I think that's on average a year after you have um, fully come out of the other side of it and your cycles have stopped um, after that 12 month period that is when they class that as post -men um, post menopause and there can be some physical things that happen to our bodies during that time um, which I guess we may we may touch on during this conversation so I guess opening opening the conversation how has it affected um our own experiences and maybe the stigmas that you know I talked about the sort of stigma that we had uh, that I had when I was growing up what are your experiences growing up um Sylvia I'll hand over to yourself first experiences growing up when I was a kid um it was never spoken about uh when I was when my you just sense when my mother and um, because my grandmother lived with, with us as well we just sense that was something was going on but we were never told anything about it. And you'd hear these words in conversation, the menopause, and it'd be like, or, you know, whisper. And they're sort of all menopause, you know, keep it quiet. So I had no idea what it was like, what it was, what was happening. You just, it was just a word. Um, that was my growing up. So uh, I didn't really know much about it at all. I don't know about you, Emily. I think I think well for me it was obviously a pretty unique growing up because when I was growing up nobody nobody realized who I was um, I think with as with a lot of women's health um, concerns it was always seen through probably quite a male lens of it being something not to be talked about something which was a taboo it was never referred to as the menopause it was just referred to as the change mm. it was given this this strange euphemism and it was seen to be some sort of time where a lot of very mysterious and magical things happened, though not good magic. And it wasn't to be talked about. And we were just to be very, you know, very quiet about that sort of thing. And so, yeah, it was, I think, like like all of you, it was this sort of strange taboo. And people were marked as being, they've gone through the change, they're going through the change, or they haven't gone through the change. And it was, yeah, I think a very male, almost a very male perspective on it a little bit like menstruation it's it was seen as a complete taboo to talk about it's interesting you say about the change because that's something else a word I remember as a little kid thinking well my mother doesn't look any different so what, what's what's going on this change this menopause you know there was no physical change whatsoever a bit of a yeah. weird thing and you mentioning the word change, Emily, I'd completely forgotten that that was the word that was used, you know, and it conjures up. I think when I was 
growing up and my mum would refer and my you know grandma would refer to I'm going through the change I think as a as a small child that feels like really scary it's like oh crikey what what change are they referring to what's what's going to happen it's um it, it's interesting the language that was used isn't it with our you know with our parents growing up I think you both you both touched on that mm. and, and 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 what thinking about those conversations what what was the biggest myth um that you now know probably wasn't wasn't true having I, I, I guess sort of grown up and had different conversations around it well I, I think probably this this thing that there's a cookie cutter experience I think there was this you know the most that was talked about was this sense that you got hot flushes and you got grumpy and it didn't last forever and you just had to put up with it and, and bear with it um, that was definitely my sense of things and that there was no there was no nuance there was no personal stories there was no sense of you know that that range of ages that I think you talked about as well Dawn so this thing about you know women having or going through menopause early that was seen as as a very shocking thing oh they're going through early menopause that was a you know that was a real you know break with the norm and it was something which was to be feared and something which was to be pitied because there was no personal experience there was no personal stories there was nothing at all like that so very stereotypical I think was was my sense on that I think picking up on that point Emily you know the, the myth was it's actually something scary and I think that was born of the fact that no one spoke about it so there was ignorance in terms of what is it what is happening what does happen because when you see someone who's gone through the change and you know, they don't look any different but, you know, when he did hear snippets of conversations, it was something to be quite, say, quite frightened of, quite scared of. And no one spoke about it. No one spoke about the three different stages. It was very taboo, very quiet, very, very hush hush. And I think that's probably the biggest myth I've had is that, you know, something to be scared of simply because we don't know what it was. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I, I agree with that, both of what you've said. And I think for me and, and you know, I have gone through it and, I, and I've shared on these calls before that I've had my own mental health um, mental health experience and I think for me where it got very blurry is so I guess the biggest myth for me was the hot flushes so I would remember my you know my mum sort of uh, getting up and just talking about these horrendous night sweats that she had and you know to the point that you know she would have to change the sheets in the bed and and I remember when there was a point when I, I was um, struggling and I wasn't sure whether it was menopause related or, or mental health related. And I think that's where it becomes very blurry. And I, and I guess we'll talk about that in, in a moment. But yeah, it, I was going, I, I'm not having hot sweats or flushes. So so it can't be that. And I, I discounted the fact that I may be experiencing, you know, perimenopausal or going through the menopause because I wasn't having those hot flushes. And I think you both touched on the fact that it wasn't spoken about was it in sort of certainly my my mum and my grandma's generation and I think this is where we are getting much better at facing into the conversations whether it's menopause mental health you know transgender Emily and just raising that awareness and having those very open conversations so we we've touched on we, we've touched on sort of some myths and I just wanted to share with you um a few um a few symptoms that we can experience um you know some of these will be known um and some of these won't be that we can face you know mentally and also physically so from a mental health symptom point of view I guess the one of the common ones is is brain fog and I know that was certainly something that I struggled with big time um, one of the other things um, that is down here is around low mood, so anxiety, which I guess are very linked to also mental health issues, some mental health issues that people face. Face, And then from a physical symptom point of view, you know, we've touched on hot flushes. So I know that affects a number of people, difficulty sleeping, dizzy spells, horrendous fatigue and muscle aches. So a lot of those symptoms that are associated with, with menopause are also uh, associated with with some mental health issues aren't they so what do you think the link is between I guess going through the menopause and mental health and how do you think they are sort of intertwined I, I guess I, I give up my perspective on this which you know having having gone through a transition where I, I've effectively gone through the replacement of my hormonal balance in my body I certainly know that, that I lifted the brain fog when I started 
uh, hormone replacement therapy, which incident is exactly the same medication as is used for uh, menopausal cisgender women. Um, so I, I certainly have some experience of the benefit of effectively running your body on what are the right hormones for you at that time, but also all of the things you've talked about, those mood swings, the brain fog, the, you know, some of the physical symptoms of changing my endocrinology as I went through. So, so you know, stopping testosterone in my body, uh, I felt immediately a, a great deal better. You know, a lot of a lot of things went away and actually things like temperature regulation and brain fog and all of those things. And I think it's really important to remember that menopause is effectively an endocrinological um I don't call it a condition, but uh, while you're going through it, it certainly gives rise to those conditions. And in the impacts, if you're not expecting it, and I think that's the crucial thing as well, when you transition, you know what you're doing. You are you are deliberately setting out to make an alteration. I think in the early stages of menopause, you may not know, and, and to your point, Dawn, you may believe it's other things going on or just you know the world around you. I think when you're not expecting a change in your um, in your hormone balance, I think that then amplifies all of those feelings. So things like the anxiety, things like the brain fog, because you don't know what's going on with your body, and you know that's quite profound. You know, to 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 start to drop off on estrogen production as a woman, and to start to see increased testosterone, and we see that in other things like uh, polycystic ovary syndrome, for example. Um, that can only have an impact on your your ability to operate day to day. And I think, you know, to, to an earlier point we made, the stigmas around menopause, the stigmas around pretty much anything which is a women's health issue. We've talked previously on these conversations about the danger of stigma, the danger of shame. I think there is an element of that still. And, and you know, knowing what we now know about HRT and the efficacy of, you know, for many women of the the uh, access to HRT and the, and the benefits that brings, that's still not a widespread enough conversation that we know from the last summer where we had the HRT shortages and mm. you know we had an HRT czar which didn't seem to do a great deal, but we know that too many women aren't able to go and have that conversation with the doctor that just says look you know I'd like to try HRT I'd like to try something to help me because of stigmas because of not knowing because of you know, not having those open conversations. So, uh, yeah, as I say, I guess my, my experience is, is doing this deliberately to myself um, in the opposite direction, but, you know, we'll come later on that I've got to make some choices later in life. Um, yeah, that's it, it. I think there's definitely a correlation there. Hmm. And just picking up on that, um, Emily, before we kind of move on to yourself, Sylvia, did, was, were your, did you... Uh, suffer more from a mental um health point of view or from a was it more mental symptoms or physical symptoms that affected yourself yeah i think it's the mental symptoms i mean ameliorated because i was doing something voluntarily mm. and and i was by definition i was accessing the right medicines to help me to get through it but through the process it was definitely that mental realignment now i i was in the benefit i was in transition going the opposite direction so I was I was lifting the brain fog, but in some ways you don't realize how much of it there is. Uh, you know, you just think actually how much of it is brain fog, how much of it is just everything in the world is on fire and I don't know how to deal with it. Um, but yeah, it's um yes, I think mental much, much more than physical. But you do feel you do feel the physical things. I mean, I'm colder than I used to be. Uh, sometimes I'm hotter than I used to be, and I, I my temperature regulation is worse. Mm. Um and and again, you're rewiring your brain to live with a different biology. Um, and yeah, it takes energy, that takes effort, that takes time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and I think, yeah, and I, and I think yeah, there is certainly something about education in this space, definitely, because I, I've got, I know a couple of people um, that I work with who have always been told that they are unable to access HRT. And that's primarily because they've got family members who have suffered with breast cancer. And that's always been a big, big no. But then, recently I know that has changed and and you know my friend had a light bulb moment when she went to the doctor and they said crikey I can't believe you've been suffering for the last five years and nobody's told you about this this new HRT that you can access and I think the more we can educate and talk about this the better um how about yourself Sylvia well listening to you two I got, I got off lightly I uh I had no brain fog I had no mental health issues no anxiety 
Uh, I did have hot flushes, but it literally was just my face. I didn't have any of the night sweats. It was just my face, as if someone put a blow torch on my face. And my face used to go bright red. And of course, we'll come to how that affected me in the workplace. Um, that's the only thing I had. The, my monthly cycle went a bit haywire. Uh, the thing that sort of affected me was my skin went very dry. My hair went very dry. Uh, and for me, probably the worst thing for me, um, because I was bullied when I was a kid for being fat, it was the weight, I wouldn't say the weight gain, that my shape changed, my waist thickened. And that really, that, that really played on my, with my mental health because it tapped into some childhood experiences of mine. And, in a, and then it sort of starts to sort of affect my sort of sense of attractiveness, uh, attractiveness to my partner, um, and that sort of element of uh, not exactly sort of questioning my identity, but my identity then started to change because I wasn't the person I was before physically. Um, but uh, I actually got off quite lightly by the sound of it. No HRT, nothing like that. Um, and weirdly, when I used to have a hot flash when I was at work, perhaps it's the way I'm wired, I used to sit there and think, oh, come on. You last 20 minutes, you're boring me now. Come on, get it over and done with so I can crack on with my work. <laughs> <laughs> that was literally how it used to be. Um, so I actually got off quite well. But it, but for me, weirdly, um, the weight gain, the weight, the shape shifting really did mess with my mess with my mental health. And hearing other people, weirdly, I'd rather have had all that than the shape shifting. But again, I then looked at it, okay, it's an opportunity. My shape has started to change shape. I haven't gained weight. So let's have a look at how we can um, look, rethink my wardrobe, rethink my style, rethink how, you know, how I dress. So that I actually got off quite, quite lightly. Mm. And I think that's a good thing to hear because we do hear some really scary stories yeah. You know, and I think that yeah. sort of just knocks that myth back into shape that it's not all doom and gloom. No, no, that's a that's a really good point. Really good point. How, how did you have any sort of workplace experiences, Emily, where you had to sort of man, manage what was going on? Well, as I say, I think, you know, transitions are slightly different thing. But what I will say is that, that part of my hormone regime is is that I take a, a hormone blocker, a testosterone blocker, which lasts anywhere between 10 and 12 weeks. And that's my mini menopause. So that that's the part for me that depending on my metabolism, you know, I can start to feel the symptoms of, of what we call a, a mini menopause every 10 weeks ish. And I've got better at realizing when it's starting to come so I can get my injection in a bit sooner if I need to. Um, but yeah, you know, I think you know, similar to similar to Sylvie, that, that sort of a heightened sense and trans people have a heightened sense of our body that's what dysphoria is all about and you know sylvia you talk really about dysmorphia and how that can be triggered by um by that yeah i start to feel more self-conscious um you know i don't flush quite as much but i do perspire more so then you start to you start to worry about you know are you sweating through your dress are you, you know people going to be wondering what's going on um so so yeah that's that's my thing every 10 to 12 weeks or so um mm. and i don't like it i don't like it one little bit because it's one of those things actually even once i've realized and i've got to get on with it it still takes about five to ten days to settle back down <laughs> again so yeah yeah you know for that for those cisgender women who are going through that and and don't you know to my earlier point don't realize what's causing it they don't have the benefit of that relief straight away and and you know hrt is a lifesaver i think yeah yeah, I, could, I couldn't agree with that more. Yeah, definitely. And I think I think just, uh, you know, before we come on to sort of our, our final point, I think I think for me, uh, you know, and I was I was very, hindsight is a great thing, isn't it? You know, I went through it as much as I struggled. I, I was putting it down to, to mental health related issues. I completely went through the menopause without even knowing. So didn't didn't have lots of symptoms apart from the brain fog and how it would affect me in the workplace is I wouldn't be able to make the simplest decisions. So I would sit there ruminating over a really simple question uh, and then I couldn't answer it and I just burst into tears at my desk. So but I put that down to mental health related issues just before we wrap up the conversation. And it's fascinating to talk about it. And I guess we could talk about this for hours. 
how what else can organizations do because we talk about mental health menopause feels like still a big taboo um if you've got a male line manager for example it's really difficult to face into that conversation where do you think we need to focus and, and change that that's a difficulty i have sorry emily that's the difficulty i had i i worked in a male dominated quasi trading environment i had a male boss uh and in a way, I was very fortunate that I did have minimal symptoms. When I had those hot flushes, I knew they were there and I'd either keep my head down or I'd get up and go to the, you know, go and get a coffee because I didn't want anyone in that group to see what was happening um, and perhaps ridicule, use it as ammunition. Oh, she's blah, 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 and use it as ammunition or a, a way to sort of use against me. So I, I kept on... The performance and I kept doing my job as as I always did and that's why I was very lucky that I didn't have those um, symptoms affecting me but you know I, I don't talk about that I'm going through the menopause I don't say I'm having a hot flush because they would just take the mickey take the mickey rotten um, and I think there are dare I say some men that are more approachable about it than others but I think if there was an education around what really does happen to the female body when it's going through the change, uh, to, to have more understanding, to reduce that stigma. So anyone, I mean, I was lucky, but anyone can actually then say this is what's happening without that fear that they're going to have the mickey taken out of them or going to be used as a, a weapon against them. Um, and I think that's really where it needs to start, as with so many things. You know, that so people have that understanding so they have more compassion, more empathy. That thing, the more knowledge we have, the more understanding we have, the more awareness we have. And even if they don't understand something, at least accept that that person may be grumpy one day or may need mm. to go to the bathroom a little bit more often or might not be able to make a decision as sharp as they normally would. Yeah, I yourself, I think the, the, the talking is really important. So I'm, I'm really proud to be a member of the committee for our, our women's networking group in my workplace. One of the things we've done over the last couple of years is we've brought in a menopause coach into the business uh, to speak and to talk about some of those tips, techniques, ways of ameliorating the worst of, of the symptoms that, that people could face. Um, and that's really important for the individuals. That's very important for the women who are going through that. One of the things we've really pushed for, and we're, 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 I'm very proud to say we're going again this year with, with the same, same person coming back in, is to push for our male colleagues to come and join us and, and to listen Definitely. and to hear it. And, and the feedback we've had on that is not only they start to understand their teams better, and it's all about things like how do you leverage hybrid working? You know, we've talked about this also in, in, you know, in circumstances of, of, of people who menstruate. You know, the fact that hybrid working has made them, it's much easier for them to... Yeah. Uh, to be effective and, and to be comfortable. So it's things like that. But what the feedback we're getting is not only are they better bosses, better managers, better leaders within the business, they're better at home. So they're starting, they come away saying, now I understand what my partner's going through. Now I understand what my mum went through or, you know, whatever that might be. So they're actually much more understanding in a broader sense. So I think businesses have got a real opportunity with employee resource groups, for example, to bring those expert voices in, but also to have the big tent and actually take the taboos away. You know, you say you're going to talk about women's issues. Everyone, oh, oh no, we can't talk about those. No, talk about them because A, it saves lives because we know so many things hide under things which are perfectly natural parts of a woman's uh, life, you know, woman's life and health. And we know there are much more serious things which are sometimes underlying and missed but also actually just makes you better human beings. And, and that's good for mental health. So drawing it back mm. to our specialty, mm. the more yeah. you know, the more you understand, the yeah. less you're frightened about, Yeah. actually the easier it is then to control your own emotions and for other people to understand the emotions you're going through. So I think just be really, just grab the ball by the horns and be proactive about it. Yeah, really, really great point. And you, and you mentioned, and we call them within Mars, um, ARGs, Associate Resource Groups. I think we've just done something that was really powerful for National Inclusion Week, which we've just had. So we got all of our IND groups 
um, to do a session, but we didn't ask people to assign to the session they normally would go to. We mixed it up so they didn't know what session they were going. And the amount of people that came out of, you know, generations, LGBTQ, the ones they wouldn't normally go to that went, wow, I've learned something. So I think absolutely that's the way forward through through education, isn't it? Definitely. And, and you know, and to, to Emily's point as well, we are all human and let's just be kind. I know that sounds might sound a bit fluffy. But let's just be kind, you know, if someone's having a bad day for whatever reason, let's be kind about it rather than nasty and mean about it. Yeah, couldn't agree with that more. So it's I think that's about our time up. So it's been fantastic to be involved in another in conversation with with Sylvia and Emily today. You know, hopefully you've learned something about um, all things menopause related and how it can link back to mental health and, and affect various parts of parts of our, uh, our, our day day to day. Been great to join you guys uh, and we'll see you again for another in conversation with the This Can Happen Ambassadors. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.